Hello kids, hope you all are doing good. Okay, today we will start with the next chapter, chapter 11, transportation in plants and animals. Okay, and today's topic will be blood, the circulatory fluid in your body. Okay, we will start. Transportation, what do you mean by transportation? For what purpose we are having such a system in our body? Actually, in our body, there are so many substances which has to be transported from one part to the next. Okay, these substances include the food, water and oxygen. Okay, we are taking in food, we are having water, we are taking in food and water into our body, oxygen is there which enters our body through our respiratory system. All these things has to be transported to their respective places or to each and every cell in our body. Okay, hence we require a transportation system in our body. Okay, now we will see which are the major transportation systems in our body. They are the circulatory system and the excretory system. Now, what is the function of our circulatory system? Circulatory system will be transporting all the required materials from your body like your food, water, oxygen, everything to each and every cell in your body. What will the cell do with all these things? Cell will be producing energy. After energy production, waste will be produced within a cell. This waste has to be removed by another transportation system called as the excretory system. So, circulatory system and excretory system both help in the transportation of materials within our body. Clear? Okay. So, today we will be dealing in detail about the circulatory system. Okay. Or we will be studying, sorry, we will be studying in detail about the circulatory fluid which is a part of your circulatory system. So, we will get started. Okay. So, the main circulatory fluid in our body is the blood. You know blood is red in color, isn't it? It is fluid in nature. It is the circulatory fluid in our body. The blood helps in the transport of various materials inside our body. Now, we will see what are the different functions of our blood or what all things does the blood transport in our body. So, moving to the functions of blood. For first num number one. The first function of blood is it will be transporting all the digested food. You know the process of digestion occur in your digestive system. Digestion is completed in your small intestine. From the small intestine the digested food is absorbed by small finger like projections called as villi. Okay. So, this blood will be taking all the nutrients from the villi to each and every cell of your body. That is the first function of your blood. The second function of blood is the transport of oxygen. When you respire, oxygen will be entering into your lungs, into your respiratory system. Your lungs will be filled with oxygen. This oxygen which is there in your lungs has to be taken by the blood again to the cells of your body. Why your cells require this oxygen? Because already blood has given all the nutrients to the cell. What will the cell do with these nutrients? The cell has to produce energy with these nutrients and for the production of energy, oxygen is very essential. Okay, so the blood will be transporting the digested food and oxygen to every cell of our body. After the production of energy in the cell, so many waste materials will be produced, isn't it? These waste materials are removed from the cells again by the blood. That is the third function. So, the removal of waste from every cell. Okay, so the removal of waste from every cell is also the function of blood. So, these are the three functions of our circulatory fluid called as the blood. Okay, now we will study about the composition of blood. What does blood contain? What is blood made up of? The blood is actually having two parts, one fluid part and a solid part. The fluid part of your blood you call it as the blood plasma. The solid part of your blood you call them as the blood cells. Actually there are three different types of blood cells. They are RBCs, WBCs and platelets. Okay. So this is the composition of blood. 
we will see it with this diagram just see this diagram the percentage of different components in blood is given here now what is the components what are the different components the fluid part of blood is called as the plasma now what is this plasma contain plasma is having 52 to 6 5, sorry 52 to 62 percentage of your blood is plasma okay next the remaining is all the blood cell out of which rbc is the major one 38 to 48 percentage of the remaining is rbc then the other two less than one percentage so this is the main composition of the different components in blood in percentage clear hope this is clear now we are going to study in detail about the blood cells as we have seen in the last slide there are three different types of blood cells which are they yes rbc second one WBC and the third one platelets. Now first one RBC just look into this diagram this is a diagram of an RBC. Okay what is the shape of this RBC can you identify it from this diagram it is disc like biconcave in nature and there is a speciality for this RBC RBC is having no nucleus no nucleus why because if there is a nucleus Okay, nucleus will be uh, taking that much space of this RBC. So, oxygen, the carrying of the, uh, the process of uh, transportation of oxygen, the capacity to carry oxygen will be reduced if it gives more space to this nucleus. So, that nucleus is removed so that that's in that space also some oxygen can be carried by this RBC. To increase the efficiency of oxygen transport, the RBC is having no nucleus okay now the rbc is red in color you can see it in this diagram isn't it now rbc is red in color because of the presence of a pigment called as hemoglobin hemoglobin hem means iron so it is an iron containing compound this iron containing compound in blood okay gives red color to a blood and Hemoglobin, the main function of hemoglobin is not giving color actually. It is helping in the process of oxygen transport. This hemoglobin will bind with the oxygen. Hemoglobin will go and capture an oxygen. This binding of hemoglobin and oxygen will allow or will increase the efficiency of oxygen transport in our body. Wherever it is required, this hemoglobin will transport this oxygen and give it to the cells. When it reaches the cell, the hemoglobin will just leave the oxygen. Oxygen can go enter into the cell. Okay, so hemoglobin helps in the transport of oxygen in your body. Hemoglobin is a red colored pigment. Okay, it gives red color to your blood. Okay, so that is all about your RBC. The second type of blood vessel is the WBCs. The WBCs are different types, are of different types. Just see neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, monocytes, lymphocytes. You can get a variety of WBCs like this. Now, what is the main function of this WBC? Whenever an infectious agent enter your body, this WBC will go and fight with it. Okay, and will protect your body. That means the WBC provides immunity to your body. Okay, so what was the function of RBCs? You remember? They help in the transport of oxygen. They will carry oxygen. And second one WBC they help in the process of giving immunity to your body. The third type of blood vessel is platelets. Platelets. Now these platelets just see this diagram platelets. These are tiny particles, tiny blood cells which help in the process of blood clotting. You see this? Blood clotting. Whenever there is a small injury in your body, you might have seen the blood will be coming out of that, that area will be bleeded. Okay, after some time the bleeding will be stopped. Okay, why this bleeding stops? Because of the formation of a clot. This clot formation occurs due to the presence of platelets in blood. So, hope all the three blood cells and their, <coughs> sorry, and their function is clear to you. Okay. Now, with that, the composition of blood is over. So, remember what all were the different components in blood? Blood is having a fluid part called as plasma and solid part called as a blood cells. RBC, WBC and platelet were the different blood cells. Okay, with that, the composition of blood is over. Now, 
the blood is a fluid which is flowing inside our body through special channels the channels through which the blood flows you call them as the blood vessels clear so blood vessels will carry the pipes in our body which carry the blood you call them as blood vessels there are actually three different types of blood vessels they are arteries veins and capillaries okay so in this slide we will study about the difference between an artery and a vein okay now look into the slide arteries and veins the first one artery artery will be carrying blood which is rich in oxygen the blood which is rich in oxygen you call it as pure blood the blood rich in oxygen you call it as pure blood whereas the blood which is rich in carbon dioxide you call it as sorry you call it as impure blood okay so the blood which is rich in oxygen is pure blood and the blood which is rich in carbon dioxide is impure blood arteries will carry pure blood veins will carry impure blood in your body the next one is the direction of blood flow the artery will take blood from heart to all other parts of the body okay whereas the vein will be taking the blood from all other parts of the body towards the heart artery is from the heart vein is towards the heart the flow of blood okay the third difference is the pressure of blood flow in arteries the blood will flow at a high pressure whereas comparatively in vein the blood flows at a low pressure okay because of this high pressure within an artery the wall of an artery will be thick and elastic okay because the blood is flowing at high pressure hence the artery should be very thick okay or else it will burst now the vein the blood is flowing in a low pressure hence the wall need not be that much thick it is having a thin wall and the wall is not that much elastic when compared to an artery next difference is valve valves are special structures which can open and close when the valve closes the blood flow is obstructed when the valve opens the blood can flow okay they you see in on arteries there are no valves whereas veins are having valves just see in this diagram see this is an artery and this is a vein in artery there is no valve there is no obstruction for blood flow whereas in veins you can see structures here kind of here also you can see structure this is an open valve and this is a closed valve when the valve is closed no blood can flow now the diagram this is an artery and this is a vein in the second diagram see here there is a valve this is the valve okay the valve is closed hence no flow of blood will occur so hope this is clear artery and a vein both are blood vessels now i told you other than this artery and vein there is one more blood vessel what was that actually you remember yes the other capillaries now we will see what is a capillary capillaries they are actually fine blood vessels they are fine thin blood vessels they are very small they are very minute this artery and vein is big hence they cannot reach each and every cell of your body so these arteries will branch into finer branches called as capillaries and the capillaries can reach each and every part or each and every cell of your body okay now these capillaries actually just see this diagram this is an artery artery will be branching into finer branches and these finer branches you call the mass capillaries capillaries will again rejoin back to form a vein so is this clear see capillaries they are very tiny blood vessels okay they will help to connect an artery to a vein okay so this is what is called as a capillary so hope this video is clear okay you studied today about the circulatory fluid blood you studied about the components of blood and you studied about the tube or the vessel through which the blood flows hope the video was clear study well have a nice day thank you